friends and family from across the country, watching safely from your homes. Welcome to the Canadian Improv Games Online National Finals! Please welcome to open the show, Anna, Lucy, and Chloe! and welcome to the first ever Canadian Improv Games online tournament. My name is Chloe, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm coming to you from Grimsby, Ontario. Now, although I won't be roughing the whole show tonight, I will be helping open it with some pals of mine. So, tonight you will be seeing online finals. These were teams that couldn't meet in person, but were able to adapt their seams to an online platform like Zoom. We all know what that is. Now, teams from across the country competed in round robin competitions, and the five teams that you're going to be seeing tonight are the top five online teams. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lucy. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm coming to you from Kingston, Ontario. Teams tonight will be performing Improv for You, which is theater made up on the spot with no script. All of these scenes were recorded last week and submitted to us. Normally, we would get suggestions from you, the audience, but this time around, suggestions were provided by our lovely panel of judges. As each scene starts, you'll hear a coach give the suggestion to the team, and then the ask for and suggestion will come up on your screen so you can see what the inspiration was for the team. CIG, didn't see you there. My name's Anna. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm calling in for Burlington, Ontario. <laughs> Tonight, teams will have four minutes to complete their scenes. You will hear a coach or a referee call one minute, one minute at the one minute mark and 30 seconds, 30 seconds at the 30 second mark. After the four minutes are up, the scenes will be completed. All right. Teams tonight will be playing a four of the possible five events. Each event will be explained before it is performed for the first time by Michelle Hart in her car with her dog Dijon. Hi Dijon! Now, before we get started, we at the CIG want to acknowledge that we are all in Canada on Indigenous land. Um, though the show is being watched all across Canada tonight, we want to acknowledge that the CIG National Office, located in Ottawa, Ontario, is built on unceded Algonquin Anishinaabe territory. We are grateful that we are able to learn, play, grow, and perform on Indigenous land all across Canada. And we ask that everyone watching this broadcast tonight, please reflect on the land on which you currently live. Scenes tonight are going to be judged by our panel of five judges, and scores will be read at the end of the night. Normally, CIG scenes are out of a possible 59 points, but we've adapted the scorecards to reflect the online style of play, so scenes tonight instead will be judged on a score of 50 points. Now, before we meet our teams for the first time, we have a little tradition here at CIG, the Improv Oath. And to deliver it, we have the man who wrote the oath, one of the founders of the games, old man Improv himself, Howard Jerome! Old Man Improv, still alive, here in my basement, wishing my Improv family a great festival! Give me an I! An M! Give me a P! Give me an R! Give me an O! Give me another O! What's that spell? What's that spell? Impro, close enough! Brothers, sisters of the Improv Nation, I welcome you to our 40-something festival. I love you all. I can't believe that we're still going. We survived this crazy COVID time, and I bless all of you. The trainers, the coaches, the teachers, the volunteers, and you blessed students, way to go. And it is now my sacred, my joyful honor to recite the Improv Oath. Will everyone please rise? In your pajamas and your sweats, I understand, I understand. Place one hand upon your heart. And if there's anybody near you, place a hand on them. If there's not, place a hand on the screen. And repeat after me. We have come together in the spirit of loving competition to celebrate the Canadian High School Improv Games. We promise to uphold the ideals of improvisation, cooperate with one another, 
to learn from each other, to commit ourselves to the moment, and above all, a good day. Yeah, yeah, Hi everyone, Program Manager Spencer here. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, hop in with a really quick uh, note about the show tonight. Um, I know that you just did the oath and you're really excited to watch some improv, but I have two quick notes. The first is that there's a theme of our themes uh, tonight and tomorrow night for our two senior finals. Um, uh, the theme is going to be um, homophones. So all of the senior teams, uh, when they were given themes, uh, were given homophones. So that's words that sound the same, um, but might be spelled differently and mean different things. So for example, no, N-O, or no, K-N-O-W. Um, and teams are asked to explore definitions of all versions of the word. Um, and that's what is going to make it uh, fun and interesting. So that is uh, our theme of our themes. Uh, and the other thing is that this show tonight, the online tournament, um, normally uh, teams have to perform a life event and they have to perform a theme event. There's, those are the two mandatory events. But this year for the online tournament only, we decided to make no scenes mandatory. So uh, all five scenes um, are up for grabs and uh, teams have to perform four of the five, but theme and life are not mandatory for tonight only. Okay, enjoy the show. Bye! Hello, my name is Michelle Hart. My pronouns are she, her. I'm going to be your head referee for this evening. This is Dijon the dog. He's going to be our lines person for this evening. Lion's dog. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Um, two day, two nights, two morning. You are going to watch some improv events and I'm going to explain to you what those events are. Currently, I'm in a parking lot in BC and people can hear me outside the car. So that's just a little fun thing for you. The first event we're going to see this evening, wherever you are, is going to be a story event. In a story event, teams must use a style of narration, having a beginning, middle, and end, but not necessarily in that order. The first story event we're going to see is from Ottawa, Ontario. It is Canterbury. Yes. Hello, everybody. I am Nick from Canterbury Improv, uh, and this will be our story event. So what we have asked from you, the lovely audience, is an everyday household object, such as a remote or a rubber duck. All right, Canterbury, huddle up. You asked for an everyday object, and you have received a whisk. <gasps> oh, a whisk! Okay, they're oh, whisk, and they they don't um they don't get used very often because um there's a new mixer. A new mixer. 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 And we'll see the scene in five, four, three, two, one. Improv. In the typical American kitchen, deep in the bottom drawer, below even the cutlery, sit the dusty, outdated utensils that have been made useless due to modern technology. In one of these dark, dingy drawers, next to old, gross measuring cups and weird wooden spatulas, sit the whisks. Oh man, I've been caught up in this cupboard for far too long ever since that shiny new electric mixer was brought to town. Me and my buddy Mixer Bree are just sick and tired of it. Say, I'm tired of just sitting around. I say we kick down that cupboard door and get ourselves into the kitchen. I think that's great. That way, our old rusty bones filled with dust will be transferred onto the electric guy, and he'll get a taste of his own medicine. They were so concerned with making themselves useful, because the dreaded spring cleaning time was approaching. They knew this was the time when humans got rid of their old useless junk. They'd managed to avoid it thus far, but they were worried this year might be the year they're gone. So we gotta act quick, dear Whiskey Liv. I'd say we blow all the dust off of us uh, so we can slip under the door. I'll say, hey, spatula, do you want to use yourself as a lever to open it? Ready, yes. Ready, Brianna? Ready, Liv. <sighs> <sighs> Mm. 
Oh, oh spatula! The, the drawer had closed. We'd gotten out, but old spatula was stuck inside the drawer. We didn't. We hoped our old friend wouldn't get thrown out in the spring cleaning, too. I've long passed my prime. You go. You still have a chance. But please, don't forget to me. Until that rubber one, I'll see him in H.E. Double Hawkins. Oh! Bye, Spatula! Rihanna, uh, his sacrifice can't be for nothing. I think it's for... I say, let's hoist ourselves up that counter with the help of the house dog. <laughs> one minute, one minute. We hoisted ourselves and we could see it then. After our climbing struggle, the electric spatula, I mean, whisper and spatula, sitting together on the counter by the electrical outlet. And we decided it's game time. We ran towards him. Our whiskey wires at the ready and pushed him off the show. Ah, I'm so a 30 seconds, the 30 seconds. Electricity, my fatal flaw. And oh, no. man, because nobody makes cakes that often, we sit on the shelf until our owners come home and eventually want cake. Well, we realized that they were going back to the traditional methods of cooking, and the old spatulas and whisks were their right-hand lieutenants. You know, I want to be getting all my steps in, so I might as well use my arms. <laughs> Next, we're going to see a character event. In a character event, teams must show us a unique and original character. And doing this event first is going to be all the way from Edmonton, Alberta. It's Archbishop McDonald. Give it up. Hi, I'm Teodora, um, and this is our character event, and it's called Good Place. Good Place is essentially we've just seen a person die, and now they're in the afterlife, and we kind of get to see them go through their life, reflect on events that really changed them and shaped them as a person. So that's essentially the game. Um, and can I please get a suggestion for a character trait? Yes, of course. Your suggestion for a character trait is genius. Genius. As in Albert Einstein is a genius. All right. So, uh, 15 seconds starting now. Dude, what um, if being a genius is like a bad thing? Yeah. Because it isolates you from all your friends? That's so true, and, yeah. Okay, um, and then we can like, and make we'll it. see the scene in right. five, four, three, two, one. Improv. Hello there. Hey, welcome. Hi. Oh, oh my God. Dora from high school. Sean, is that, where am I? Oh, well, um, fun fact, this right here, this utter nothingness, this is the afterlife. You're dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but don't worry. Don't worry. I'm also dead. And I'm here to guide you through this process, help you handle your trauma. Oh, First step in doing this, is we're going to guide you through all your life from start right. to end. You see, Dora, you're quite the smart cookie. As a matter of fact, in your kindergarten class, I remember watching, I was amazed. You were just solving every problem. Uh, whoosh. All righty. So this is how you take the derivative of something. Can't believe you guys don't know this. Oh, my God. What's the derivative? Huh? What's a derivative's favorite color? I'll be red. It's a mathematical function, guys. I, I'm sorry, you know what? I'm just gonna go off and uh, do my own thing because I just think that our intellectualism, you guys are here and I am here. So you're yeah. saying you're superior to us? I don't know what any of those words you just said meant. What's a superior's favorite color? Probably blue. I'm yeah, you know, I just always felt misunderstood and like I can never talk to somebody about my interests because everyone was interested in colors, unicorns, and all I wanted to talk about was mathematical equations. Huh. Well, uh, and that, that uh, whole thing I want to talk about, it stayed true. In fact, it kept going to later in our lives. Mm -hmm. After we'd finished university, we'd graduated, we were adults, 
we can never hang out, specifically the two of us, because there was always felt like there was that intellectual barrier there. Whoosh. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dora, I got tickets to that new uh, that, uh, monster truck showcase. You want to come? It's going to be awesome. Um, they, um, I came the first time. I thought it was interesting. Um, but really, it's just the same thing. How, how about this? I found a new, very interesting documentary that we could watch. Might be up your alley. A documentary? Yeah. Dora, Dora, I think we need to have an important conversation. I feel like for our entire lives, there's always been this massive gap between us. You've always been this super intellectual person. There's nothing wrong with that, but it feels like it's something you you can never turn off. And it's, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that as a friend. Wait, Sean, you can't can't be serious. We've been friends since kindergarten. uh, Have we been? Maybe if you just work harder to be a little bit smarter and appreciate the finer things in quality, not like truck driving. Like I think I'm fine right where I am. Okay. One minute. I don't think we can be friends anymore. I'm sorry. It shot it. Whoosh. Like, yeah. That Whoosh. was so you were honestly my only friend, actually. Everyone else kind of left after I honestly I, I feel like I could have handled that better. I don't know. I'm sorry I couldn't apologize when you were alive. But you know what, Dora? You, that moment really struck a chord with you. Mm-hmm. You began to realize how your intelligence is a gift that you have to give to other people. 30 seconds. And here's you at the end of your life giving a lecture to underprivileged people on space. Whoosh. Whoosh. Well, let me tell you, everybody. I always thought that being intelligent made me a bit superior and I realized that it really doesn't we're all humans and instead of flaunting my intelligence I could use it to teach you guys and teacher help a satellite is coming down it's coming for the ceiling it's coming for the ceiling and scene up next is a life event where teams must act and react with sincerity we're gonna see this life event all the way from Guelph, Ontario. It's GCBR. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nina. I'm from, you know, GCBI Critical Sanity. If you don't know that already, well, then what are you doing? Um, for our store, for our life event, we need big news. All right. So for your life event, you asked for big news, and you got. You are going to have a new sibling. You are going to have a new sibling. You have 15 seconds as a group to discuss it. Starting now, go. This is a Parents threat. Talking to their kid about adopting another. Kid. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, same it idea. feels like yeah. they're already not getting enough attention from their parents. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. That is good. I got who's acting in this. I could do a dad. Can I be in it? Go I, for it. I could do a good dad. All right, okay. Nina and Custance, that works. Okay, so we don't yeah. custom for the mom and dad. Mom and, then, and dad, where's the child? I can be a child. Or right. Grace, you're always a child. All <laughs> right, child. so... Yeah. 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 Uh, and you got... Uh, you're going to have a new sibling, and we're going to see this scene starting in five, four, three, two, one. Improv! Grace, can you come down here, please? But I'm finishing up my game of solitaire. <laughs> Why do you need to do that now? Because Actually, no, just come down here. It'll wait. It'll wait. Come down here. Okay. Hey, guys. I Hi. Mom and Dad. Can I help you guys? We need to talk to you about something. We were thinking that because, you know, you're an only child... That maybe it'd be better if you had a sibling in order to hang out with. Like another kid in the household that I Yeah. Like. Yeah. Why? I just why? Well, you see, I work a lot, and uh, your mom also works a lot, so there are times when we just can't be around, and we think that you need that emotional connection with something. So, we've decided to adopt another child. Yeah, but 
If you get another child, then when you are around, you're not going to spend the time with me. You're going to spend it with the new kid. That's not true. That's not true. We will love you both equally. But you hardly love me when, whenever you guys are around. I, I always feel like you guys are just in and out. They hardly ever talk to you guys. And I just, if I get another sibling, then they're just going to take all the attention. Uh, well, listen, Jace. Well, we will try our best to hang out with both of you as much as we can guarantee Again, we we work a lot, and you know, you guys can hang out with each other too. You know, so it'll kind of be like you're also getting attention for them. Is we this also- just because I just play solitaire all day, and ever since we moved, like I don't have any friends, and you guys are just worried about me? I hear you guys talking when I when I'm upstairs, and you guys are in the kitchen. Well, that definitely doesn't help. Um, so, listen, we think that you could take on some of this responsibility and help us with this new child. It'll be like that, uh, that, that class you took in, uh, last year in your ninth grade, you know, where you take care of the child, except for, like, the fact that it's a, re- it's a real child. And then, like, you know, it'll be, it'll be good for you. And then you can like use it as an excuse to get outside. They can play solitaire with you. Yeah, you could learn. You could learn how to play speed solitaire. One minute. One minute. I guess that could be pretty fun. Yeah. Like, you know, I I've been learning about this new game. It's called Uno, but I need a couple of people to play it. So maybe I can teach my new sibling how to play Uno. You can. And you know what? When we get the weekend off, you know. We can have a group Uno night because I hear card games. I they generally work with like four people, so it'll make like the perfect seconds, Uno seconds. group. Oh my god, we could we could play all the different packs. There's flip, and we even we could just start with the original. There's a lot of rules I can teach you guys. That sounds perfect, honey. Oh my god, this is going to be so much fun! Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, now go go finish your game of uh, solitaire. Okay, I will, and then I'll look up all the rules to play Uno, and then I'll teach all of the rules to, for Uno to you guys. Okay. Okay. That's and awesome. scene, awesome! Thank you, folks, very much. Next up, we have a style event. In the style event, teams are asked to improvise within the common elements of a genre or style. First one to see the style event this evening, or first one to perform it, that is. It's going to be from Caledon, Ontario. It's Mayfield Secondary School Garbanzo Extravaganzo! So, hi, I'm Emily from the Mayfield Improv Team Garbanzo Extravaganzo, and this is our style event. We are doing the style of horror, and our conventions are a villain origin story, characters making poor decisions, and characters being suspicious of each other. Our ask for is a company or a business, such as a garden center or a paper retailer. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, Garbanzo Extravaganzo from Mayfield Secondary School. Um, you have asked for a company. Uh, for your style and you have gotten um the company of an auto mechanic shop an auto mechanic shop okay got the good one Who wants to be the villain okay uh i'll be the villain is it, is it, is it auto mechanic it's a car shop? yeah that's a car, yeah, car, car like um battery yes. cars. Battery. so yeah okay. you could do like battery wrenches, acid, wrenches. Okay. Yeah. Oil. run someone over with a car maybe yeah. running yeah. over someone with a black people all right, everybody, ready for work? We got we got some big jobs today. I know it's early, but it's okay. We got some big jobs. So Perry, Maya, and Gabby, I want you on that big van there. See what's wrong with it. There's some Karen lady. I don't know. Um, Jaden, why don't you and Brianna um, just clean up the tires, fix up the area. It's kind of messy. And Rachel, can you work the front desk, answer the phones? You know, I'll be around if you need my help. Sounds good. Knock, knock, knock. Rachel, Open, the the van. In. Open the van. Open Hi. the van. Open the van. Open the van. Open the van? Uh, okay, let's open it. Okay. okay. Hello. Whoa. Um. Um. Excuse me, oh, sir. You can't. 
you can't be in here. This part is closed off. Um, just yeah, talk to Rachel's front desk. How did you, how, I, I, how how you get inside? I've been, I've been in this van for years, and you guys haven't fixed it. It was my wife's van, and none of you took the initiative to fix it until 15 years later. And now they call me the car killer with a C, and I'm about to get all of you. Yeah. Um, um, are you like the Karen's kid that Sorry. dropped off his van? Like, I'll drive. Yeah. I'll I'll drive you home. I'll get you some McDonald's. No, I'll so drive you home. Like... I'm gonna push you to the ground. I'm gonna get in the car and run you over. Oh my God, Brianna, get out of the way! Oh my God! Who didn't put the tire blocks? This is who? Who was in yeah. charge? Like, Gabby, was what it you? Doing? I'm in the middle of doing it. You wouldn't have been able to drive that car if you had just done your job. <laughs> None Can of we, you are clearly uh, doing your job right. And Perry, now it's your turn. No, I'm gonna Perry is our best employee. I'm gonna no, take please. the Fine. oil um, in the tank and I'm gonna put it all over you and light oh, you on Perry, fire. No, 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 oh God! Oh, that's disgusting. Um, oh, no. Who, how are you doing the oil out? Come on, people. I don't pay you for nothing. Emily, do something. I don't know what to do. I yeah, don't Emily. have a job oh. description to deal with a monster. Emily, why don't you go help Perry in that fire? Oh, <laughs> 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 Is there water? Anyone? How are you doing this? Like, what? What do you want? <laughs> Can you get out of here and leave us alone already? Hey, Jesus. Gasoline. I'm going to call the gasoline in the right car. Now. I drank the gasoline in the car. The gasoline. And it gave me special powers. It's ingested in me. And now I have the gasoline gift to murder you all using auto mechanic weapons. So now I'm going to take these large wrenches. One minute, and I'm going to take Gabby and Maya and I'm going to twist your necks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now, Jaden and Maya, I have two last favors to ask you. I need you to contact my wife and tell her that her car has been fixed after you, Jaden, fix the car. Do I can't tell right you that Maya's already dead. If you don't fix the car, I'm taking you both out as well. I can't 30 be seconds, Rachel, 30 do seconds. Okay, fine, okay, fine, okay, fine. Um, okay, there's one more wrench here. I can try. I've never fixed a car, but maybe. Okay, I think I'm doing something. Oh my god, you fixed it. Calling my, call my wife. Call my wife. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, hello? Hello? Yeah, um, we, we fixed your car. <laughs> now you both don't get to live either. I'm gonna run away in this car with my wife, and you what? both... Sit under the trunk and die. And time. And time. Next up, we've got a theme event. In a theme event, teams are asked to explore a theme. The first one to perform a theme event this evening is going to be from Edmonton, Alberta. It's Strathcona. Hi, I'm Van, and we're Strathcona. And for our theme event, we're going to be playing a game called Viewmaster. And like with an actual Viewmaster where you look through the lens and click through different perspectives and points of view, we're going to be doing the exact same with the theme. We're going to take a theme and uh, explore it through different perspectives and points of view. And so for this game, can we have a theme? Awesome. Reminder that your theme is a homophone. And the theme that you received is band. Band. Okay, good. Awesome. Here we go. This is Skona. This is their theme. They're doing a Viewmaster event to explore the theme of band, which can be spelled a couple of different ways. And we're going to see that in five, four, three, two, one. Clap, clap, clap. Improv. Michael and his band, the Rubber Bands, had just released their first album. And they were so excited to go to the local folk fest, but they got a letter in the mail that said that they weren't allowed to go. Apparently something about their lyrics being too uh, only hip with the kids of the days and all the older folk that came to the folk fest wouldn't be able to enjoy it. But they had worked so hard to get here and they weren't going to give up. They were gonna find a way into that festival and they were gonna show their music to the world. It was 1240 and no one had come to sit down with Katie. L lunch was almost over and yet she'd made no friends up until Someone sat down and handed her a friendship band and said, let's be friends. 
I think one of the more interesting things about the modern indie rock scene is there's a lot of bands who are really just like one guy. So like Carsey Headrest is just Will Toledo and just a bunch of other dudes. And I think it's really interesting how a lot of people really want the aesthetics of a band, like a full group of people, but it's really just kind of one mastermind orchestrating everything behind the scenes. The ninth graders really took over the entire school, kicking out all the, kicking over all the eighth graders and seventh graders that came in their path. They walked like a pack through the halls, kicking over garbage cans, busting down lockers with their bare fists. They were unstoppable. They, they were the kings and queens and monarchs of the school. Welcome to the Viking War Band! He screamed as the longship sailed up over the ocean waves. Eric and his entire band of Vikings were here to raid the coast, and they were coming back with as much treasure laden across their backs as they could find. As Tyler strapped on his GoPro on his head, he was at West Edmonton Mall, the biggest mall in North America, and he decided to jump into the water with a giant ship. And so he did! He collapsed in, and as his friends were cheering from him from the second floor, he, he, he sees the mall cops, he, and he knows what's going to happen next! Jessica was taking an online test, but oh my goodness, her internet stopped working. I, I think the bandwidth must have gone and oh, everything was going wrong. She even got a paper cut and had to go grab a band-aid and oh, she would never get into band school. It was a disaster. When Linda's mom found her NWA straight out of Compton album, she knew that she was in big trouble. The explicit lyric sign in the bottom corner Immediately, she knew that this album was going to get her in big, big trouble. Jeffrey stood there with his hands up. The police officer stood there. Oh, you did something bad there, Jeffrey. Jeffrey stood there, frozen. Mr. Officer, I didn't need to steal the carton of milk. I just needed it for my recipe. Now, you see, Jackson was the coolest on the playground. He had a Velociraptor rainbow loom. He also had, like, a Pterodactyl rainbow loom. And trust me, dinosaurs were all of the hype in grade four. Eric handed out pamphlets at his workplace that said, we must band together and join a union to demand higher wages. So... As he sat there in the studio with his band trying to figure out what they 30 were seconds. Do, they realized that even if they couldn't make it to the festival together, what had mattered was the time they spent together making music. And that as long as they stayed stuck together like a band-aid, everything was going to be a-okay. And scene. Okay, if anyone else is curious, this is my dog, Dijon. Dijon. Stay still. You tried your best. Oh, hi, CIG. My name is Mac, and I am just a boy out here in Edmonton, Alberta, looking for some good stories, big characters, and I've been so lucky to see them as a judge uh, for five years from coast to coast at the online and national tournaments. I'm so grateful to everyone here tonight and watching at home. I even taught myself how to tie a bow tie just for this. Okay, now how do you turn this thing off? Hello, is there someone in there? Can someone help me? Hello there. My name is Travis, and I was one of the judges for this year's Canadian Improv Games Tournament. A little fun fact about me, I'm from Vancouver Island, and I've been volunteering for the games for about uh, 10 years now. It's been a while. I've been judging for about a third of that. So do the math. Anyways, I've loved watching every single scene and watching everyone having a lot of fun, whether it's in person or online. Keep up the good work. Hi, my name's Corinne. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm from the Toronto and Montreal region for the CIG. I've been volunteering with the games for five years now and judging for three of those years. My favorite parts of the scorecard are staging, stakes, and listening. Best of luck to all the teams tonight. I know you're going to have a fantastic time. Hi, it's Katie from Waterloo, Ontario. I've been judging with the Canadian Improv Games for eight years. And I'm very excited to be here for the National Festival this week. Uh, I like dinosaurs and math and soup. And my favorite skill on the scorecard is probably accepting offers. Have a great week, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily O'Keefe, and I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland. 
This is my ninth year as a judge and trainer with Canadian Improv Games. And a fun fact about me is that I am currently teaching myself Atlantean from Disney's Atlantis The Lost Empire. Yes, it is a real language. Hey everybody, Jonas here, pronouns he, him, and I'm in the Ottawa region. I've been a player, a volunteer, and now I'm introducing the next event. Coming up, we've got Archbishop McDonald with their story event. Liliana from the Archbishop McDonald Improv Team. Um, and today for our story event, we are going to be playing a game called Typewriter. Uh, now, Typewriter is a game where a narrator type person will set up a story and give suggestions in which the characters in that story will carry it out. So can we please get an item for our suggestion? Yes, so for your story event, you are asking for an object and your object is sidewalk chalk. Sidewalk chalk. Sidewalk chalk. Great, you have 15 seconds. Okay, so I'm thinking like little kid, right? Yeah. And okay. Then, oh, um, one Maybe like one. Two, and we will see this scene in five. I'll be four, chalk, you be kid. Three, two, oh, God, one. Kid. Improv. A lonely kid sits alone on the sidewalk. The sun is shining, it's turning hot, but none of his friends came out to play. But I called them over, where'd they go? I, I thought it would be tag or something to do. I'm so bored. Bye, uh, hiya there. Mm -hmm. Down here, down here, to your left, to your left. Oh. Hi. Oh, hi, yeah, I'm the pink one, the pink chalk. Oh, hi, I see you, I see you. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, I am here to fix your boredom. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, I have been um, absorbing all of your um, ideas you've been saying out loud, and I think we should really put that into fruition and Express yourself. I feel like that could solve your boredom. Okay. And the I young agree. So he went on to create drawing after drawing. It actually drew the attention, drew the attention of a passerby when he noticed that those were actually some pretty good drawings. Whoa there, kid. He got some art on you, don't you? Uh yeah. Well, um, uh, what can I say? I I just have this magic crayon and not crayon, it's chalk. That's what my mommy told me. Chalk. And yes, some magic his words for how nervous he was, and that's when the chalk came to help. Hey, it's okay. This this big man may be a little scary, but we've been drawing unicorns for five hours now. We have enough practice. Just show him what you got. Show him what you got. All right, all right. Come here, big man. Come here. All right, I'm coming over there. All right. What have you got for me? Her name is Sprout. She's a magical unicorn with two horns and a big neck. You know why? To help beat up the bad guys. She just goes, Wah! just oh, like nice. that. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you something, kid. My name is Snaz McSnazerson, and I work at the big art company. And I'll tell you, I got an eye for talent when I see it. So, I'm willing to give you a position in my company if you're able to draw me something that exemplifies boredom. Can I do that? Why boredom? Boy, he was so good at being bored. So, you know, the chalk actually came and gave him a very motivational speech about boredom. We have experience being bored, not me specifically, but I've witnessed you experiencing boredom. We have hours of it. Just think of space and time and, oh God, yeah. Space Wait a minute, time. I know what to do. One minute? Since the boredom didn't come from outside, it came from within, the art shouldn't be on a wall. It should be on me. <gasps> Embrace the art, I love it. Yes. Mr. Snazzy Man. In you order want to, to get that chalk on his body, he had to do the unthinkable. He had to dip it into water. No. 
30 seconds. The last, don't you dare dip me in water. But then he said, This is my last chance. I will finally make it big in the art world, Kraya. I you. won't be able to help you anymore. And I'm so yeah, If you want the job, you gotta dump him. Goodbye, old friend. I'll remember you. No, no. That's <laughs> oh. so emotional. I think this is a perfect place to end the story. And see. <laughs> Up next, you're gonna see a life event, and you are gonna see that life event from Strathcona. Hi everyone, my name's Sarah from Strathcona CIG. Um, and for our life event today, we are gonna be playing Tap Out Truth Log. Uh, so basically, how Tap Out Truth Log works is someone's gonna start by telling an actual story that happened to, to them in real life, and then we're gonna switch in one by one, uh, continuing the story all the way to the end. It'll end up completely different from the original story, but it'll still be so much fun. Uh, so for an offer, can we please get an event that would happen between the ages of 7 and 17? You sure can, Sarah. And your event between the ages of 7 and 17 is first love. First love. This is Skona. They're doing a life event in the form of a tap out truth log And their suggestion is a suggestion of first love. And we're going to see that in five, four, three. Two, one, clap, 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 improv. It was sixth grade at Brookside Elementary School. And every, every recess, everyone in the entire grade would always play this game called zombie tag. And so what we do is we'd pair up in little buddies so that we'd make sure that we would not be isolated and left by our own to get tagged out. We'd always like stick to, uh, stick to each other to help us, um, uh, you know, do better in the game and uh, try to survive as long as we could. And we'd switch partners every time. And one recess, it was the lunch recess. So it was the longest one. So the game was more intense. Uh, one time I was paired uh, with a girl uh, named Kirsten and I had a crush on her for the longest time. I had a crush on her for the entirety of the school year. When I find out that we were paired together, it was amazing because we were gonna spend the entirety of lunch together chasing all the other classmates around. And it didn't matter to me if we were slow because, you know, I was spending time with her. But then she looked me in the eyes. And I saw right behind her that a hand was coming up to tag her on the shoulder and I was speechless. She was gonna become a zombie and, and we were gonna be torn apart. So oh, I did a heroic thing that day. I reached my hand out and I get tagged in her place and I told her to run, run away, Kirsten, don't get tagged. My eyes started growing bigger, but I knew it was a sacrifice I had to make. See, grade six zombie tag was so, so serious. And I, as I saw Kirsten run, she had a little light sparkle in her eyes and a big smile. She knew what I had done for her, the sacrifice it was, it was worth it. But I still wanted to be with her. And now I was a zombie and, and she wasn't. And the only way I could be with her is if I, if I tagged her and turned her into zombie. So aimlessly running, trying to make a decision, I, I began to chase her across the schoolyard, deciding whether it was worth it to rejoin. And you see, if I, if I tagged her, I could ruin her chances of being a survivor, but... I wanted to be with her so badly. I didn't know what to do. Do I sacrifice her or do I sacrifice myself? Eventually, I had been chasing her for so long that she was getting tired and I wasn't. And so I reached my hand out the same way that the hand reached out to me and I tagged her. She looked at me with scared in her eyes, the betrayal that was happening. And I couldn't look as I tagged her. But I knew that once we once I tagged her, we could be together. We could go and hunt other non-zombies. And not looking, I actually lock hands with her hands. And I'm trying, I get butterflies in my stomach. Oh my God, am I holding Kirsten's hands? Holy crap. And, and she looks at me and says, you know, I remember that courageous thing you did for me at the beginning of lunch. And so if I get to be a zombie, a zombie with you, then I'll gladly take that role and give away my humanity to run around the playground with you. Together, we ran hand in hand, killing all the people who were remaining as non-zombies. And at the end of that recess, 
the zombies won. And the Hey everyone, my name is Chloe, I use she, her pronouns, and this is Cookie, and we are both currently in Grimsby, Ontario. Um, I was a player in the games from 2015 to 2019, and um, we are just so jazzed to be introducing the next event and team. So we are about to see a theme event, and it's going to be coming to you from... Mayfield! Yeah, Mayfield! Yes, hello, my name is Perry. I am from the Mayfield Improv Team Garbanzo Extravaganzo, and we are going to be given a theme that we will explore. Okay. Um, all right, so Garbanzo Extravaganzo from Mayfield Secondary School, you have asked for a theme, and you have been given the theme of break. 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 Okay, okay, breaking a bone. Uh, yeah. Break dancing. Breaking up. 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 We have to bite them and drink their blood. I thought I saw vampires out here. What? Really? Did you not see the vampires? No, I mean, I thought I heard some hissing, but I thought it was a possum. Look behind you. <laughs> Okay. Oh, woo! Um, Leave them alone. Leave them alone. I thought I smelled vampires. When will the over sun here. rise and then we'll go away? We're not safe out here until the sun rises. Gabby. Oh my gosh. Hey. Girl, you are so ready. I'm about to show you my new dance moves I got for the dance competition. Are you ready? You just gotta yeah. like, pop it, lock it. Like, okay. Okay. Like, how does that look? Does that look good? Like, do you think I could win yes. with that? Like, what do you think? Spice it up a little bit, you know? Give like, me some pop and lock. Like, 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 like just you don't keep moving you know yeah okay, okay. so perry um <clears throat> go ahead start driving please i'll just take notes don't mind me i'm just not here <laughs> okay for sure just you know normal whoa okay break 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 oh I, I, okay <laughs> oh i'm sorry i'm just like really nervous you know it's like first a time well I, a red light means red light yes red light means it's time to stop, right? I, yes. Learn that, right? Okay. okay. I got this like giant chocolate bar. Do you want some? Yeah. Can you give me like a piece, please? Yeah. I'm really hungry. Here we go. Is this good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a little more, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, how about that? A little more. A little uh, more. Gabby, you know how you say I could play on your phone, but not to yeah. go up and down the stairs? Oh, my goodness. Did you? I, I dropped it from the top and went all the way down. Yeah, and not. Um, Doctor Perry, I am. Um, I'm sorry to see on such short notice, but, but my neck is, is killing me, and I, I don't, I don't know, like what's happening. I kind of. Do you want me to? No, I'll just take a look. Maybe it's probably stress or something. Or, or let me just, let me just. Oh, oh my God! Um, oh, oh my uh, God! Sorry, um, Gabby. Gabby. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm really sorry. I think I have to end our relationship. Your what? sister, your sister, she literally cracked up your phone, your sister Brianna. And yeah. I, you, you can't use social media anymore. And if we can't talk on social media, what really are we? So are I'm ending kidding? this relationship right here, right now. Are you one kidding minute, me? One minute. No, Hiya, not, so not. I just have some notes for you for your performance. Okay. Um, we need to make sure you stay in character. Okay, sometimes I see you getting out of character and it kind of throws off the scene, all right? And we have performance in two weeks, so we need to make sure you can stay in character, all right? So okay. can I try? Emily, Emily. Yeah? Um, can, I sing, can I sing for you and show you my performance? Yeah, of I'm, course. I'm definitely better than Maya. Okay, okay oh. we'll see. Okay. And, uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Class, okay. if you want to pass this math exam, no sleep, no eat, bus, 
plane, get there, do the work, put in the work. I want to see you nonstop, okay? Is it that hard? What? I don't want, okay. I want to see so let's do it, okay? Oh, yes, yes. Break up with your girlfriend. Hey everyone in the CIG family. I'm David. I use he, him, and ill, ill pronouns, and I've been a volunteer in the Ottawa region for the last 10 years. I can't wait to see every single one of you right here in Ottawa next year so I can cheer you on in person like you all deserve. Coming up next, we have a style event from right here in Ottawa, Canterbury. Hi, I'm Carrie from the Canterbury Improv Team, and this is, as Ms. Dobson said, our style event. So our style event is in the style of an educational children's TV show. You might be wondering, what are your conventions? Well, they are. We will have a panel of knowledgeable guests, you will learn something new, even if it is absurd. And we have a musical element. So our ask for for you today is a question a child might ask, such as, why is the sky blue? And what does the tooth fairy do with all of our tea? I wonder. All right, Canterbury. So you asked for a question that a child might ask. And you have received, um, let me just make sure I do this right. You have received, is the moon really made of cheese? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was sent up there to an experiment to see how it would react in space. And instead of exploding like normal things, it got really dense and started falling. And that's why we have lactose intolerant people. <laughs> yes, we and we'll see the scene in five, four, three, two, one. Improv the Gerald Show. Oh, 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 hey, Gerald. Oh. Hey, Cool oh, Guy Nick. I can't help but notice that you seem a little uncomfortable there, dude. Yeah, I just had a whole heaping pot of fondue, and it was delicious, but. Cheese doesn't exactly agree with me. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry about that. But speaking yeah. of cheese, we had a super pink moon just a few days ago, and I asked my sister, wait, why isn't it pink? And she said, Brianna, it's not ever pink. It's actually just made of cheese. And is she playing with me, or is the moon really made of cheese? <laughs> well, I don't know why your sister calls you Brianna, but I also don't know the answer to your question. But we're friends with a real smart scientist, so why don't you go pay him a visit? I will. Okay, see you later, Gerald. Ha. Oh, hi, Gerald. Hi. You seem smart. Is the moon really made of cheese? And for the record, my middle name is Brianna. It's Gerald Brianna Sockman. Continue. Yes. A really cool name, Bri Gerald Brianna Sockman. Um, the moon is, in fact, made of cheese. It was sent up there as an experiment when NASA decided they wanted to know what would happen if cheese was in space. Normal things usually expand because of the lack of gravity, but cheese behaved differently. It stuck together and decided to follow the Earth. But, you know, in doing so, it created a lot of problems, like the lack of cheese in lactose intolerance. Oh, so that's what that is. But honestly, I need a second opinion. I'd like to go to my friend who I know loves cheese a lot. My dear friend Spot the Dog. Good luck! Oh, 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 hi, Gerald! Who's a good boy? Hi! I'm a good boy. What's up, Gerald? Say, Spot, since you're always howling at the moon, and you love cheese so much, could you really tell me if the moon is made of cheese or not? Because I don't know if I believe science. Well, I don't really know much about the moon. All I know is I like to howl at the moon, and I do know that when I eat cheese, my owners are not very happy, if you know what I mean, all right? <laughs> oh, but you're still my good boy. Oh, thank, thank you. you, Gerald. Thank you. I love you. I love you, too. Bye, now. Gerald. Is that a squirrel? I gotta go. Oh, oh, so, Gerald.
Gerald, did you learn anything new? One minute, one minute. Oh, absolutely so many things. And it was, it's been it's such a great day. And you know what? It has been cloudy, like, today. So I hope your lactose intolerance is going to get a little better because we can't quite see the moon too well. You know, I am feeling a bit better. But you know what would make me feel even better? A song from someone who I'm sure has been to the moon, our friend the Space Cowboy. Howdy! Howdy, Jerry! 30 seconds! I followed you around all day, and I wrote a song. Today we met Gerald. We learned about the moon and that it's really made of cheese. We learned that from the scientist it was sent as an experiment. And it turns out that's why people have lactose intolerance. Thanks, Gerald. On the Gerald Show, we love all your questions and we tell you all we know and it's all true. Hey there, improvisers. My name is Jared Zipman. My pronouns are he, him. I am located in the lovely city of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I was involved in the Canadian Improv Games from 2007 until 2010, which officially makes me 104 years old. My team placed eighth at nationals in the 2009 national tournament, and after high school, I was a host, adjudicator, and judge from 2010 until 2014 in the Manitoba Improv League. And now, we're going to be seeing a theme event from GCVI. Thanks, everyone. So, for your theme, I'm putting it in the chat right now. It is right, right, and right. All right, right, R-I-G-H-T, right, W-R-I-T-E, and right, R-I-T-E. You have 15 seconds in your groups now to begin planning. Go you ahead. Part? I think we've got to do a legal firm. We got it. Oh, have a lot yeah, of a legal firm. Because you, because you're writing with like a pen and paper, you're Thank doing you. your rights as in your rights That's as a true. person, your right as in like what was left to you. Someone, Someone is new at the firm and is going through a rite of passage. Okay. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Rite of passage okay. as at the law firm, like a newbie at the law firm. They're they're like well, a, you're like, whatever. So you know, so you're given right, right, law firm. Right. Oh god, oh god. Who wants to start? Exploring this theme Just in your in the meeting, meeting, guess, starting so. in five, four, three, two, one. Improv. Now, Zoe, uh, this may seem like just some classic hazing, but I, I, I assure you, uh, every single one of our new employees here um, at our law firm, Justin, Justin Wright Law, um, every single one of our employees does have to slide down the banister from the top. It's kind of a bit of like a like a like an initiation thing. So why don't you just get yourself up there, and we'll, we'll catch you if you if you fall. And um, just so you know, if you do hurt yourself, I do know a pretty good personal injury lawyer myself. It is myself. I'm a personal injury lawyer. <laughs> That's very funny, Mr. Lenny. But um, th this seems just a little unconventional. Yes, Don't we do things differently think? around here. Don't worry about it. Just, just, just go up. Just go up and do it. I, I, I believe in you. I mean, I am just a little bit worried, you know, what if I fall and hurt myself or something and then I might have to take sick days and that would be a loss to the company. Well, um, I, y you, you won't though is the thing. And, um, don't worry, our company can take a little loss because, um, our money and our taxes are done in a very, um, uh, thrifty way. Shall we say? All right. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. You you know what's going on. Just just, just get up there and slide. If it's what I have to do to prove myself, I'll do it. Claire, I have said this every single day. Touch my apple in the fridge one more time, and I'm gonna lose it. I know I you mean, touched my apple. I mean, do you really want to get into this with me? I mean. Legally, that fridge is public property. I did not see your name on that apple anywhere. I put a sticky note on it. Not on the physical apple. The sticky note could have fallen off, hypothetically. It was in front of the apple, Claire. You know, I feel like I'm... 
this argument is getting a little old and I feel like you're not really providing many details here. Whatever. Ah, it's lovely to see you, Mrs. Bates. Uh, you came in to talk about uh, copyright for your new book? Yeah, my new book. It's um, basically it's about this little, he's an 11 year old boy and he gets a letter saying that he's going to a wizarding school. But I want to copyright it to make sure no one steals my idea. His name is Harris Porter. Okay. Uh, I need to look something up real quick. Give me a moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is too similar to the award-winning series Harry Potter. So you have a lot of danger of getting in a lot of trouble for trying to copyright this. Well... The, it, one minute, the concept one minute. is very no, it could similar, be fixed but very simply, this can be fixed very simply. Actually, if you change all the names so that they sound completely different. So if I called him like Boba Fett instead, yes, but that is also a copyrighted property. I just I, do some. I don't know what you names. Okay. And then okay, you can come fine, back. Fine. You have my number. You have my card. Uh, I can give you a new one. Here's my card. Um. And just call me when you figure that out, okay? 30 seconds. Okay. Lenny, Hi, Lenny. Oh, Mr. Lenny, Zoe fell down the, down the stairs on the railing or whatever. Okay, I, everybody I calm down. Through. Everybody calm down, okay? Everybody calm down. I'm about to make a lot of money as her personal injury lawyer, all right? So all your problems are void and not a, not an issue because this is all about me and I'm about to make bank, okay? This was all my plan all along, so please just skedaddle as I get the paperwork in order, okay? Half of her body is paralyzed. What is wrong with you? Oh, this is going to be lots of money. Let's go. And scene. Thank you, folks, very much. Oh, my gosh. Look who it is. Hey, pal. Hey, oh my gosh, it's Alex Wozni from Red Deer, Alberta. Oh my gosh, it's Sachin from Ottawa, Ontario. How are you? I'm good, man. Man, it has been way too long. I know, it feels like I haven't seen you since Nationals two years ago. Yeah, just, you know, been crazy busy, but... Totally, but you didn't see any of my texts? Or my Zoom party invites? I know I sent you a hangout notice on Google+. Plus. What about LinkedIn? I, I've been trying to connect. I know you love LinkedIn. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to see you after all this time. I'm happy to see you too, man. Oh my gosh, it is crazy that the games are still happening this year. I'm so happy. I know. Have you seen some of these scenes? Whoa! It is crazy. These kids are getting more and more talented every single year. It's it, it's great. It's great. It's um it is. I don't I don't know. It just it feels like something's missing. I I don't know. I could just be crazy. You know what? I've been feeling the same way. It feels like there's this question just sitting in the back of my mind. A question. That's exactly it. There's this question that's just like, I just don't know what it is. What's in the box? That's right, folks. We're still doing what's in the box. You still have a chance to win awesome prizes, but there's one more thing we still gotta do. That's right, folks. It wouldn't be what's in the box if we didn't get a little bit dressed up. Now listen, you might be asking yourself, what can I win if there isn't a box full of amazing things that you can deliver to me on a stage? Well, we're doing you one better. This year, we've got three $50 gift certificates to the Canadian Improv Games Store. You might be asking yourself, what can I get on the Canadian Improv Games Store? Well, I don't know. Do you like water bottles? Do you like journals? Do you like t-shirts and hats? Do you like, oh, I don't know, a tote bag? You can get all that stuff and more on the Canadian Improv Games store, and you can even start window shopping now and thinking about what you're going to do when you win this awesome prize. We've got three going up, and we're going to draw at the end of the tournament, so buy your tickets! How are we going to do that, though, Sachin? And you're looking good! <sighs> Thanks, Laws. I know what you're thinking. How are you going to donate if you're not rushing the stage to buy tickets off me and Alex? Well, what you need to do this year is go to our Canada Helps page. 
you need to fill out your first name and your last name and your email so we can make sure to notify you if you win. We're going to make sure that the URL is in the description and on the screen for you. Now listen folks, a one-time donation of $10 is going to get you one ticket. A one-time donation of $20 is going to get you three tickets. And a one-time donation of $50 is going to get you 10 tickets. Now, you have until Sunday, May 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to donate. And make sure to select CIG Nationals 2021 What's in the Box as your funding option in order for your donation to qualify as a ticket purchase. Now, Waz, throw some numbers their way. If you hit the donate monthly button, the tickets go wild. If you commit to donating $5 a month, we're going to give you 15 tickets. If you bump that up to $10, it's 40 tickets. And if you're willing to commit to donating $20 a month, we're gonna give you 100 tickets. What? This year might just be my favorite year of the game so far because the fact that it's happening is proof of how important it is to the people that know about its magic. I personally found that the most important things in life truly are just being with the people you love, sharing an experience and some laughs, and just living for and appreciating the moment. The show doesn't stop at home and you're seeing proof of that right now. Growing up, the Canadian Improv Games was so important to me and to young players like me because it provided us a safe and welcoming space to tell stories and be creative with a group of friends. In a year like this, I think that is something that is so special and worth protecting. And your donations help us do that. Whether it's through regional programs like our regional tournaments or training, and to help ensure that when this is all done, we can have another national tournament and bring everyone back together again. Your donations have such an impact and we're so thankful for them. So remember, you have until Sunday, May 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to donate. The draw is gonna happen on Monday, May 10th at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Stay tuned. It was so good to see you, man. Gosh, I have missed explaining things with you. I know, I know. I miss you too, man. It was really good to see you. And thanks to everyone watching this. The Canadian Improv Games are only possible thanks to kind folks like you. Whether you're watching, playing, donating, or volunteering, we're so thankful for what you contribute to the games. So thank you for making another year of the games possible. The show goes on no matter what. So enjoy the rest of it, stay safe, and we'll all be together soon. Take care. Bye. Hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying uh, night two of our uh, national tournament. Um, I introduced myself a little bit earlier, but my name is Spencer Dunn. I live in Guelph, Ontario. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the program manager for the Canadian Improv Games. Um, we're going to have an intermission now, uh, but here's the thing. There's no real intermission because there's no snack bar. Uh, and there's no, uh, you're at home. So um, we're gonna throw up a slide here in a second. You can pause the video during that intermission slide. Um, you can go and get your what's in the box tickets um, and then you can uh, grab a snack, grab a drink, go to the washroom and then come back and hit play whenever you're ready. Cool? Okay, we'll see you after the intermission. Bye. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andrew Fung. I'm one of the stars of Kim's Convenience. This message is for all the participants of the national tournament for the Canadian Improv Games. Congratulations to making it to this point. I am so excited for you. I am a lifelong improviser. I participated in a tournament just like this when I was in high school, and I know how exciting and amazing it is. Um, go out there, tell the best stories, make each other laugh, um, and embrace the failure. Um, it's been such a unique year with so many ups and downs, and I am so happy to hear that you get to perform uh, for some of you virtually and some of you in person, uh, whatever it takes to be safe for everyone around us. But um, once again, I'm so proud of everybody. Congratulations. Uh, this message is for all the participants of the National Tournament for the Canadian Prop Games. I cannot wait to watch and laugh. Peace. 
Next, you're going to see a story event, and you're going to see it from Mayfield Garbanzo Extravaganzo. Hi, my name is Arjun, and I'm from the Mayfield Improv team Garbanzo Extravaganzo. And for our story event, we need a title of a story that doesn't exist, like The Cuddly Pillow or The Man Who Ran. All right, Garbanzo Extravaganzo from Mayfield Secondary School, you have asked for a story title that does not exist, and you have received the story title of... The Martian Wedding. The Martian Wedding. So maybe a Martian is marrying a human and yeah. the families don't approve. Mm-hmm. The families yeah. don't approve. Families don't approve. Does it okay. take, they, 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 they won't come to space. They won't come to space for the wedding. Yeah, they won't come to space yes. for the wedding. Yes. Okay. One son, Mars, there was a Martian. His name was Marvin. What and Marvin was a romantic at heart. And he fell in love with a beautiful human named Rachel. Rachel, I'm a happy mother. Rachel was an astronaut who was on the Mars mission where she discovered Marvin and the rest of his colony. Over the years, they fell in love and now they were ready to get married. All the Martians on Mars were super excited for it, but Rachel's human family down on Earth weren't really pleased with their daughter marrying a Martian. Um, Rachel, what are you, guys, are you gonna do? Are you guys seriously not gonna come for the wedding? Like, okay, I get it, he's a Martian, but that doesn't mean that his heart is any different from ours. Okay, well, yeah, maybe, but it's just so far away. I mean, no, not I don't know if we maybe. have. Rachel, you see, married. the family oh, always God. had such high expectations for Rachel. They always wanted her to marry well and have a family and a nice house in the suburbs so, so they could have lots of grandkids. But if their daughter was marrying some Martian and living on Mars for the rest of her life, they wouldn't be able to have any of that. Rachel, you're going to end up on a National Geographic special. This is not okay. So? I thought you wanted me to, like, achieve big goals. We wanted you to achieve big goals on Earth. Okay, well, we are living in an age where we are exploring the entire galaxy. Why do I have to stay on one planet? Are you, are you After ready? arguing for several hours, the family agreed to just see what Mars was like. A little trial run to meet Marvin's colony and just see what the wedding venue would be like. But that doesn't mean they were very open-minded about the whole ordeal. Rachel, Rachel, I can, I, I, I can teleport the family to Mars. That is a great idea. <gasps> Hi. Hi. Oh, you're here. Oh my goodness. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Who are Perry, you? Are you, seeing this? are you seeing this, Perry? Yeah, I'm, um, uh, we're, we're on Mars? Yeah. yeah. This I is don't... Marvin. How did we get here? I'm so, I'm really, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm kind of nervous. Like, I don't know. Are we on a different planet right now? I'm, I'm very- Rachel, I yeah. sent you to college for this? For this? I'm Hi, on mommy. another planet. Hi, I just mommy. never know species. Like, I, I don't- um, okay, The family so was severely in- disturbed by the colony's culture, by their strange symbolism and their language that they couldn't understand. They just, this wasn't the dream they had in mind one for minute, their daughter. One minute. Uh, how okay, can I Rachel, uh, Rachel, can we get married? Okay, let's do it. You're so get Rachel married? and Marvin ran away despite what her family wishes were because they were in love. Rachel, come what? back. Are you out of your mind? Oh. We don't approve of this. No, you're out of your mind because your mind is small. You are closed minded. And that yeah. is not okay. 30 I have seconds, 30 too. seconds. I have three hearts. Yes. See, triple the love. The family would just never understand what Rachel saw in Marvin the Martian. And so they went back to Earth and Rachel stayed on Mars with Marvin's colony and they lived happily ever after. Oh, and What's up, everybody? It's Jeremy Taylor coming to you from Montreal, Quebec. How's everybody doing? Happy Nationals. I played with Lisgar Collegiate Institute at the Ottawa Tournament, 1997, 98, and 99. Big love to all my Jimmy alumni out there. 
And then 2001 to 2004, I ran the Tri-Cities Tournament, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, and Southern Ontario, wearing my favorite improv shirt today. Check out that beauty. Isn't that special? Next up, you have a character event from GCVR. Hi, my name's Tim. We are GCVI Critical Sanity, and for our character event, we would like to ask for a type of weather. All right, you asked for a type of weather, and you got a drought. A drought. All right, you have 15 seconds in your huddle to discuss, and I'll count you in after that. Go ahead. Very dry. Yeah, yeah very small. A little bit humor's got to be. Does anyone hear, like, really good, really good room. dry you humor? Maybe extremely Out of energy. energy. I feel like Tim would be a good person for this. Oh, okay. Okay. Tim, or be a scarab, maybe. All right. Very, for your character event, you have a type of it? weather, and okay. you got a drought. I'll do it, I guess. Uh, right, we're going to see hey, this start? character scene Go from ahead. you, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Improv. You know how some people have dry senses of humor. This guy I know, Tim, he is the epitome of a dry sense of humor. No, yeah, and then uh, my mom said that she wasn't going to be buying supper tonight, so I had to do it. <laughs> Come on, that was a good one. If you're ever looking to liven up a party someplace or just have a good time, don't, don't go to him. He's a bit of a downer, and he never really tends to be very energetic at any given point in time. No, listen, I'm just saying that, like, if we want to save the world and stop global warming, we have to start working on it now. Because if we, if we even leave it another 20 years, then people are going to start dying, and it's gonna, the world's going to be basically unsalvageable. What, what do you mean this isn't a good topic for a party conversation? I'm having a great time. Okay, Tim. You have volunteered at a kindergarten, okay? And volunteering at a kindergarten requires a certain level of tact that you are not displaying. So please stop talking about such dreary subjects with these four-year-olds. Oh, they need to know what world they're growing into. They're it's the a, ones that are going to have to deal with it, not us. It's, it's a unfortunate. You have to listen to me. You need to have it. You need to go about this gently and introduce these things when they're ready, not when they're four and when they don't know what things like climate crisis and global bankruptcy mean. It's unfortunate. Kids need to be taught these things at early ages, I think. I mean, come on, I was taught this, I was, I was, I was taught about uh, uh, the oil crisis at like five, so. That, maybe that these explains kids a lot. Up. That really explains a lot. I am very sorry for you. <laughs> what, it's a- Tim Tozer. Welcome yes. to Amazon. So I am going to have to say that um, we know all these people do like these TikToks and stuff about, you know, the secrets behind Amazon, um, capitalism stuff. We don't allow any of that. We really just don't want you to talk about our work outside of work. We would really appreciate that. Um, that's really about it. And then we can get to the training. Any questions? Sucks that I had to get this job. Excuse me? Uh, Jeff Bezos is a capitalist pig. I'm sorry. I did not. I This was my last choice for a job, but unfortunately it was the only one that would take me. Yeah, we understand that. We all know that. But listen, do not speak about it outside of work, okay? Okay. No promises, but I'll try. <laughs> now, Tim, you've worked at our old folks home for about one week. But I've been getting a lot of complaints from the residents here that one minute, sit down one minute. in preparation to talk with them, but then they'll say, hey, so do you want to hear my life story? And you'll be like, you'll shrug. You'll just shrug it off. Like, well, The shrug is because I don't care either way. Like, if they're going to tell me their life story, that's cool by me. But if they're not, like, I'm not going to sweat it, you know? These people have no one else to talk to except for you and sometimes... That's a shame. <laughs> I am not good to talk to you. Trust me. Then why would you ever... 30 seconds, 30 seconds. I, I was under the impression that my job was going to be more janitorial, honestly. That's not the position you applied for, but... Oh, oh, okay, then maybe we can see if there's a... You know what? No. No, I, I feel like you wouldn't even be able to do well there. 
Ooh, you harsh. suck with old people. You you look, they go to they look towards you, and you turn away from them. Like, yeah. What's your issue, man? Listen, I don't want to look like that one day, bro. I'm gonna die before I get old. And scene. <laughs> thank you, folks, very much. Thank you, thank you. Hey, CIG, it's Jen Ferris, she, her. I'm in Toronto right now, but I played way back in 2008 in New Brunswick. And I just want to take a moment to say I am so incredibly proud of all of you. Whether you do something big and take the lead, or you're back supporting, anything that you do right now, I am so incredibly proud because you're putting yourself out there, and that should be something to celebrate. So, I can't wait to see what you got next. And with that being said, audience at home, give me a drum roll, and let's see a life event from Archbishop McDonald! You know, what is life but just a series of events and things that happen? You know, quite a literal definition. And in that sense, we're going to be playing a game called String of Hearts. How this works is we're going to be given a topic, uh, which is a problem that a teenager would go through, and we're going to explore that through various monologues and scenes. So could I get my uh, the problem we're dealing with? Absolutely. Your your problem is falling short of perfection. Falling short of perfection. Perfect. 15 seconds starting now. Not meeting parents' expectations. Um, not meeting uh, your own expectations. More, uh, more time management. But getting really you're just overworking yourself. Getting we'll rejected. Team in five, four, three, two, one. Improv. You know, my parents taught me some great values, and one of those values is to never settle for less. But every time I fail, yeah, I feel like I can't continue anymore. And every time I fail, and I feel like I can't continue anymore, I don't, I can't do anything. I'm just stuck in limbo and this cycle of, of can I do it? I'm afraid of failure, but. <laughs> can't do the things that I want to do because I might not be able to do them the way I want them to. I set so high of a standard for myself that I don't even want to reach that bar anymore. I can't believe it. I spent an entire hour today doing absolutely nothing productive. I could have been keeping up with my hobbies or keeping up with my social life or trying to maintain that 100 and count but instead I'm doing nothing. How am I supposed to succeed this way? And I can't even manage my own time in such a way that allows me to be the best version of myself. <laughs> new day, new job. Hey, Georgia. Uh, sorry, Miss, yeah. Miss Georgia, sorry. <laughs> I know I worked so hard for this resume and yeah. do you think you could look at it and do you think you could accept me? I uh, yeah, see I got um I reviewed it when you emailed it the first 13 times, but it's you you're a well-rounded kid, don't get me wrong. It's just I we're looking for someone with some previous experience, you know, in the field of waiter waitering. I'm sorry. Try, maybe try next door. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, Liliana, get down here. Hi. Dude, listen, I know you've been stuck in your room for like the past week because you didn't get into NYU, but you know, the, the gang misses you. In fact, we, we, we came here to kind of lift you up a bit. Sean, that's that's really sweet of you, but I just I don't know if I can handle it. You know, you guys all got in, and I I just won't be there with you. I just I didn't study enough. I didn't do no. all of, enough of my homework. I didn't. You worked so hard, and you did everything to the best of your ability, and you shouldn't let this rejection define you, because you're so much stronger than that. I know you are. Kian knows you are, and we both love you, and we both think that you're a great person. It's just one school. It doesn't make you who you are. Yeah. That means a lot coming from you guys. Thank you. One minute. One minute. Well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> come on, come on. Up, up, up. Oh, come on. Man. 
Again, we're trying, again. We're trying to be to nail that world record, and you're bringing us down, man. No, look, I, I'm trying my best. I've been training every day, four hours at least, at least. Okay, and your best isn't looking good. Thirty seconds. I don't need more. I'm sorry. I had an eye-opening talk with my friend, and um, he taught me the importance of one particular word. If I haven't reached perfection, it doesn't mean that I haven't reached perfection. I just need to tack on one more word. I just haven't reached perfection yet. And Hi there, my name is Alexander Wozny. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm from Red Deer, Alberta. I played in the Canadian Improv Games in 2014 and 15, and I am so excited to welcome to the screen for their story event, it's Strathcona! Oh my goodness. Hi guys, my name is Andrew from Strathcona High School, and today, for our first game, we're going to be starting with the story event. So today, um, we're going to be starting with Lost and Found. So basically how this game works is that there's going to be two narrators who will narrate a story with a beginning, middle, and an end. And the actors within that story, that is going to be us six at the top, we will be acting as objects. So we're all going to be objects in that story. So can, uh, for the suggestion, can we get an unusual object, please? An unusual you, object? You sure can. And I'm just going to remind our audience not to use the chat during the show now, please. Uh, until after the scenes are done. Your suggestion of an unusual object, Skona, is an antique lantern. An antique lantern. So this is Skona, this is their story event, and they are going to investigate something about an antique lantern. And we are gonna see that story in five, four, three, two, one. Clap, 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 improv. Grandma, I, I want to hear the story that you told me a million times again about the antique lantern in the old antique shop. Oh boy. Oh hey, boy. Timmy, the, the power's out today, so it's like super on topic, okay? Remember, there was the lantern named Danturn, and then there was the light on the lantern named Franturn, and then, of course, there was the lantern case named Chase. Yeah, and they were all the best of friends because only with the three of them could they light up the world around it and make it a better place for everyone in the antique shop. And if one of them was missing, the lantern would not light up. That's right. You guys, I'm so glad I was able to find two other parts that just really like to light up the world. We all li like to live in a brighter place. And I'm so glad that we can be here together to make the our dream come true. We wouldn't be able to do it without each other. But then one day, a rock flew through the window of the antique shop. And not only did it smash through the glass of the window, it smashed into the glass case of the lantern. The case was broken. No. Oh, no. And the wind, the wind that caused the rock to, to blow through also caused the light to flicker out and slowly die. No, no, I don't go away. Oh, oh my God. No. Everything, Everything was is dark. dark. I'm alone. I, I don't have my friends to help me light up the world. I can't make the, the place brighter and make everyone happy by myself. I'm useless by myself without my friends. And the store was getting ever so dark as the folds of night began to wrap the lantern in its, its dark, evil fingers. And alone he sat, shivering, no flame to keep him warm, no casing to keep the flame comfortable, broken and alone he was. <laughs> but then, out of the darkness, he saw something. A match, frick, lit in the darkness of the antique shop wandering towards him slowly through the darkness. Hello there, Mr. Lantern. You seem a bit cold, don't you? I am. I used to have my friends with me to help me light up the world, but now everything's dark and I'm all alone and I can't light up anything by myself. Well, I see you don't have a case, but that doesn't mean that you still can't help out the store. Here, let me just 
relight your light. <sighs> That's a bit better. It won't be nearly as strong without your case, but it's at least something. One it's- minute. Wait, lantern? I believe you're back! I'm so, this makes me so happy! Wow! We're lighting this place up a little bit every every more second, but I wish... I, I wish, wish that we could have your case back. <laughs> but sometimes you have to let go of those that once helped you and learn to be your own person. Hung above the door of the antique shop, that lantern still burns to this day. The light and the lantern together. 30 seconds. See, now, Grandma, now you understand why I sleep with a nightlight all the time, okay? It gets scary in my room at night. I get it, I get it. And now that the power's back on, I think the light's on again, and you can go to bed. Yes! And, and scene. Scene. Knock, knock. What's happening, skaters? My name is Glennis Marshall, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm currently in Ottawa, Ontario, living in my parents' basement. <laughs> It is my 10th year with the CIG. I played in Ottawa and then I volunteered in Toronto as a what's in the box lead, head ref, judge, taxidermist. Life happens. So I hope you're ready for your next scene. It's gonna be a life event from Canterbury. Alrighty. Hi everybody. My name's Olivia from Canterbury Improv. And we're gonna be doing a life event. Um, so what we need from you, the audience, is a red flag in a relationship. Could be platonic, romantic, any kind of relationship. We're looking for a red flag, such as they only listen to music on vinyl, or they call their mom every five minutes. Okay, Canterbury. You huddle up, huddle up. You asked for a red flag in a relationship, and you have received... They keep a lot of secrets. Oh, so, um, they're actually, like, they don't want to unload onto you because they don't want to, like, burden you. Yeah, but, but, but you, you want to know what's going on with them because they've been so secretive and it makes you feel really, really bad. You feel like yeah. you're and we'll see the scene in yeah. five, four, three, two, one. Improv. Hey, how you doing? I feel like I haven't um, seen you in forever. Yeah, it's been super awesome. My, like, improv team's been doing a lot of practicing and stuff, so, yeah, it's been good. How are you, Rick? Um, pretty good. Uh, I had a few late assignments that I had to catch up on, but now that I'm done, I feel so much better. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, school's been a little difficult for me lately. Um, oh, my God, what's, what's going on? Just like, I don't know, like everything online, I feel like it's been really bringing down my mood and I just, I don't know, like, I feel awkward talking to you about this, but like. Well, no, I want to, I want to like hear about it. If you feel yeah. comfortable hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's nothing really, it's, yeah. Um, okay, well, um, I, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll see you, I, I think we, now that the semester's over, we have class together, right? So. Yeah, 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 we have, um. Business, I think, yeah. Oh, so cool. I'll, just, I'll see you I'll then. I'll see you then. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. I myself am not the best at keeping secrets. Uh, I can if there are other people's. My own. No, I'm a... But, you know, it helps a lot in... Help, helps a lot in friendships because I'm an open book. Um, not the best in just public scenarios because I am considered an oversharer. Yeah. Dude! Oh my god! You will not believe what happened! What? Uh, Jeremy asked me out to prom. No, he didn't! Yeah! Oh my god, that was awesome! That's, he got me like that's... flowers and everything, it was so that's cute. You. Thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> Who have you got your eye on? Dude. No. <laughs> oh, prom's, not, prom's just not even on your radar. <laughs> I just like, mm, I don't want to talk about it. No. Come on, I feel like we used to be so close. Come on, just tell me. I want to know. What's going on with you? I don't know. Can you stop, like, from bombing? Oh. oh, yeah, sorry. I just want to make sure you know that I'm, like, here, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
a lot of the times I really don't like telling anyone what's going on with me at any time because I want to separate those sections of my life so they don't even relate to each other in any kind of way possible. Uh, but that's not too good because there are people who care about you out there. And it's a good idea to reach out when you need it. And you're not annoying them. If they're there for you, they're there for you. And you'll know. Trinity, I feel like I feel like we haven't been talking much lately. I don't know, like you just kind of stopped like texting and calling and stuff. I just why was that? Oh, um, I don't know. I just kind of got the vibe that you. One minute, one minute. Like, I don't know. I just kind of thought you didn't want to hang out anymore. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I, I like what gave what gave you that idea though? Um, just like I don't know. I feel like every time we talk. It's kind of like, i sure what's going on in my life. And then I feel like you're, 30 not seconds. that you have to share, but like, I, I don't want to feel like this is a one-sided thing and you're like helping me out and like listening to me and, and I'm not doing that for you. And I, I just, I don't want to be, if I'm just kind of making things I'm worse. Just, I don't, I don't want to like put all that on you. Like sometimes it's a lot for me and I, I just don't want to be that person to overshare. But I, I can start. I don't have a problem date yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally okay. I just, I want you to know that I'm, I'm here and we can, you don't have to show right away, but like when you want to, I'm going to be here. Sounds good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. My name is Gary the Rock LaRose Corneal and I'm a production stage manager here with the Improv Games. It is my great pleasure to introduce the Johnson Hart Award. The Johnson Hart Award, as many of you may know, is dedicated to the memory of Mr. Johnson Moretti, who was one of the founders of the Improv Games. Johnson was a friend of mine, as well as a mentor when I was a young improviser. The Johnson Hart Award recognizes the contribution of a particular individual that embodies the oath and spirit and meaning of the Canadian Improv Games. When Johnson was with us, he would watch every single night of play with incredible attention to every single player on stage, from the ones who were forefront and leading the scenes to the ones that weren't as confident in the background helping and providing environment or maybe just one key line. Johnson would watch that entire night of play, and then at the end, he would go and find that key little player who had made a small contribution but had given so much and brought so much energy to their team and single them out and let them know how their small contribution helped grow their scene and grow their team and how proud of them he was for doing what he did. And as somebody who was on the receiving end of one of those compliments as a young player, let me tell you that it felt like a million bucks. Johnson's, whose heart that we recognize in this award, was bigger than the moon. He loved improv, he loved improv players, and he knew how transformative improv could be in the lives of young people, such as teenagers that are just starting off out into the world. That's why, as we said, the Improv Games has dedicated this award to the Johnson Hart Award to a player who embodies the very fundamentals of what the Improv Games is all about. Somebody who has made an incredible contribution to their team and who has grown as a person, as a player. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Cam Cleary of the Crofton House Improv Team, who is going to speak to us a little bit about this year's recipient. Hello everyone, my name is Cam and I'm the coach from the Crofton House School Improv Team. I want to thank you for accepting Danielle Liu as the winner of this award. Every student that walks through the drama room doors is a student worth celebrating, but when I read the description of the Johnson Hart Award, it was without a doubt to me who this award should go to. Dan joined our improv team in grade 9 and exhibited many of the initial emotions students experience when they first join improv, but to an extent more so than the rest of her teammates. Dan felt anxious on stage and whilst never missing a practice, preferred to not speak and stick to environment roles instead. Dan was the silent supporter in practice, and as a high schooler myself at the time, I didn't know how to push them to participate in games and performances like CIG. I mistakenly thought that participating in performances was the only way students could feel fulfilled from the club. 
I learned very quickly, however, that to Dan, the improv club being a safe space and a family to them was more than anything she would ask of me. Eventually, Dan began sharing more of herself in practices, adding in one or two lines within three minute scenes. But in grade 10, most notably, we as a team discovered Dan's incredible skill to deliver the most amazing one-liners. Dan became the silent assassin of the team, throwing in a joke once every few practices, always enough to throw the rest of us into stitches. It was without a doubt that year that the Crofton improv team was absolutely nothing without Dan. In grade 10, Dan's voice in the club grew strong, showing up to practice with the intention of making the rest of us cry laughing with her self-deprecating jokes and meme references. While I was slightly concerned over Dan's perpetual sleep deprivation, she never missed a practice and always prioritized making us laugh. My favorite moment from that year was Dan coming up to me at the start of practice and saying, I am so sorry, I'm so grateful to be here, but I am exhausted and I need to roll around the floor for a bit. And Dan did that. She laid down on the ground and began crying while rolling around. Whether from stress or laughing, I'm not completely sure, but it made all of us laugh so hard we had to stop practice and rush to the bathroom. Absolutely no improv was done that entire practice. Instead, we sat around in a circle and talked and laughed about how much joy Dan brought to us every single week without a fail. It was this year that I learned that every time Dan cracked one of her jokes, the club would have to halt to appreciate it. I promise they are literally always that funny. This year, Dan has evolved so far with their improv skills and leadership capabilities and practice, it makes me beyond emotional to see how far they've come. Dan witnesses the shy grade eights who are just like her and makes them feel comfortable enough to make their own jokes once every few practices with her incredible warmth and impeccably timed humor. This award is meant for a student who overcame the odds and I pledge without a doubt that Dan has exceedingly shown these skills throughout her time on the team. Dan, despite struggling with their own anxiety and school commitments and a clear lack of sleep, is the heart of Crofton Improv. This year, Dan overwhelmingly dealt with her own stress, but still held the role of the silent assassin, always playing the support in scenes by stepping in when the scene needs it, adding a few punchlines, and stepping back to the, let the rest of her amazing team take on the roles that they're more comfortable taking. This year, Dan has demonstrated a breakthrough moment exponentially, realizing her capability of going from the shy background supporter to applying for and being awarded with the role of captain for next year. Dan is an underdog. Dan worked against her own odds, battling their confidence and becoming a leader on the team that we are beyond lucky to have. Dan is a brave, capable, hilarious student who should be awarded for her strength, her consistent support of her teammates, her continuous evolving, her heart of gold, and her crazy contribution to both CIGs and the Crofton Improv team over the past few years. We as a team are so lucky to have you, Dan, and congratulations on winning this award. So thank you very much. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Hi, I'm Erin Pergart and I use they, them, and she, her pronouns. I'm currently on the unceded territories of the Musqueam peoples within the lower mainland BC region of the Canadian Improv Games. I used to perform at the games from the years 2013 to 2017, and I have been a volunteer ever since. Now, enough about me. Let's get on to Caterbury and their character event. All right, well, this is our character event. My name is Brianna. I, my name is not Gerald, even in the slightest. Anyway, <laughs> uh, for us to continue, what we need from you is a candle scent, such as orange spice or eucalyptus garden. Okay, Canterbury, huddle up. You asked for a candle scent, and you have received old book. Oh, yeah. oh, super I, old. A librarian. Right, and, oh, oh, oh. and the stakes is she's she's getting so old that she can't take care of the library anymore, and she wants to pass it on, but she can't. She doesn't know who to pass it on to. She's super and we'll old. see the scene in oh. five, really, really four, cool. three, two, one. Improv. <laughs> is an old book. Such a sweet, frail, old lady. She is so old and so slow because her back's always hunched over, looking at books. Old book ran Canada's oldest library. It was world renowned for being so old and it was passed through the generations. But due to her stiff back, she was worried that she couldn't carry on the legacy anymore. 
She moved so slowly that she couldn't get from shelf to shelf to dust them all in time. And by the time she finished the entire library, well, the other side was already covered in a thick layer of dust again. And she needed to figure out a way to help take care of the library properly. But she needed to find someone responsible, not one of those irresponsible kids who dog ear the pages on her favorite novels. Wow! Exactly not that. Well, you should have seen her in her prime. Let's go back like 40 years to when she was just having the best time. So that is why, in conclusion, we should have more libraries. Woo! Oh dear, that was quite the rousing presentation. And your library is so clean. Literally not a speck of dust anywhere. I'm sure you have more. I will Tell dedicate me. my life to its upkeep, and when it is my turn to pass it on, I will find the exact right person to do so. So mm. let's see old book L in the park looking for someone to take over the library. <laughs> oh. any youngsters out here, I I wonder if any of them will be able to dust the correct way and, and really care about the knowledge the way I do. Rock oh. on! Oh. oh, tried approaching many of the youths, but she was too slow and all of them living their very fast-paced, short attention span lives staring at their phones. She was having quite a problem. Please, write and read this book. It takes uh, only three hours to read. Ah, uh, it's too much time. When all, the, all, all, of a, old, all of a sudden, old book saw a young little girl sitting on the bench. Her name, Quick Spring. Oh, um, hello, young girl. You seem very agile and reachable for shallows. How would you like to be my apprentice in upkeeping the new library? One minute. The library. The library? Canada's oldest library I can upkeep? Yes. I see that book in your hand, and I think, I think maybe we'd be perfect. Can you show me around, maybe? That's okay. Oh, you know. Okay, so thank you. Of, so the two of them trained, and she showed y uh, young Quick Spring how to clean the shelves efficiently and in, in a time. 30 seconds, manner. 30 seconds. And, she, and, young, and, and Quick Spring enjoyed reading all of the books in her spare time, and she encouraged her other young friends to read and visit the library, and soon it was bustling and filled with knowledge and interest once more. Rock this reminds on. me of my golden years. I think I'll take my retirement into the park. Thank you, Thank you. young spring. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kirsten Stackhouse. I currently reside in Fredericton, New Brunswick with these two Ikea sharks and this stuffed owl. I played in the games from 2008 through to 2011, and then I was a ref, a trainer, and a national level judge. But more importantly, tonight, you are about to see a life event from the team Mayfield. Hi, my name is Maya from the Mayfield Improv Team Garbanzo Extravaganzo, and this is our life event. So we asked for a tough decision to make, so that could be something like whether or not to quit your job or whether or not to go to your brother's wedding. All right. Uh, so Garbanzo Extravaganzo from Mayfield Secondary School, you have asked for a significant decision for one to make or a decision for one to make. And you have received the decision of to lie or tell the truth, to lie or tell the truth. OK, um, maybe like they, they want to sneak out, yeah, see their friends. Sneak out. They tell their parents that they're they're going they're going to stay in, but they actually sneak out to see their friends. Yeah, they're trying yeah. to decide whether to obey their parents or to see their friends or something or like stay that. for game. Yeah. Oh, uh, hi, Maya. Hey. Hi. Um, we should probably um, talk Perry in tonight. Just yeah, to see how yeah let's do it. Let's do it, yeah. Hi, baby. 
Hey, hey. Yeah, what's up? What's, what's going yeah. on? We just wanted to check in on you because we haven't in a while and tell you that we, we love you and we trust you and we just hope you sleep like an angel tonight, okay? And we're just really oh. happy with everything that you're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, that's, that's really nice. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, I guess. See you okay. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bring, bring, bring. Hello? Hello. What is it? Perry, it's Jaden. Yeah. Do Hello? I need to play more? We're supposed to go out tonight. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, I, I totally forgot about that. Um, it's like, it's like 11. We gotta go. We gotta get to the party. Yeah, okay. I just have to like go out my window because like I, I can't tell my parents. Um so like I'll I'll be there in uh, a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Brianna and I were just waiting here at the front of the house. Here, I'll put Brianna on here. Talk Brianna. Okay. Yo, what's up? Where are you? Come on, let's get out. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no, no. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm coming. Um All right, um, all right. Dude, I'll wait right under your window. <laughs> I'll catch you or something. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm. Okay, um, is this a good idea? I don't know. Um, yes, it's a good idea, Perry. Don't you want to go see your friends and go to that party that everyone's going to? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there's gonna be like a whole bunch of people there, you know? I've been wanting to meet new people, you know, make some more friends, so. What about be... your parents that were so sweet to you just now? Think about them and how that's gonna make them feel. Yeah, but they're yeah. such burdens, aren't they? Always telling you what to do, who to see, when to sleep. Come That's on, Perry, go I to mean, the like... party. See your okay. friends. Okay. Brianna's okay. already waiting. Okay, well, but parents are supposed to do those things because they take care of you and they love you and they trust you, like they said just now. And if you do this and you get caught, they're, you're going to But she won't person. get caught because they are smart. And they won't get caught, right, Perry? Come on, just go see your friends. But you might you know, get caught. I know, but like I've I've done everything they've asked, right? Like I I, I got all my good marks. I, I did everything correctly, right? So like, why can't I go out just? You're once? such a like, good child, Perry. They can't get mad at you for this. They will definitely get mad at you for this. Don't don't listen to them. It's true. Listen to me. I mean, they are like. One minute, one minute. For my college, like, they, they do help out a lot. The least you could do is respect the fact that they don't want you to sneak out to go to a party. I guess they are just trying to protect me, right? They just don't want me to get hurt. Exactly. Perry, Perry. I, I don't think I want to come out tonight, guys. Um, Perry, what? I, I... I just like already told my parents I'm staying in and I don't want them to worry about me or anything. 30 so. seconds. I know, 30 30 seconds. Seconds. Yeah, it's it's okay. I, I'm gonna stay in. Thanks though. Like maybe maybe another time. We're already okay. late. Uh, okay, whatever. Have a good time. Peace. Bye guys. Bye. And see Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I was a player in the CIG from 2013 to 2018, and I've been volunteering ever since, so it's wonderful to see how many people are participating this year, and congratulations if you are. Next up, we're going to see a story event from GCVI. Hi, my name is Zoe. I'm from the GCVI Critical Sanity, as you can see, and what we need from you for our story event is a reason to replace a car. All right, so you asked for a reason to replace your car, and you got the color clashes with your outfit. The color clashes with your outfit. All right, you have 15 seconds to huddle up starting right now. A fashion designer is trying to create a new brand of like fashion, but it doesn't work with any colors, so they decide they need to destroy all color. I like, Ooh, that. I like that, actually. Okay. Fashion designer. That sounds really cool. How would we resolve that? Um, all right, GCVI, you asked colors. for a <laughs> reason to sell your car for the story of the, 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 the color clashes color. with your outfit. Oh, yeah, they make a monochrome and we are going to see design. that Custom story event start generation. starting in five, four, three, two, one, improv. Scarrett was 
going to be the new mushroom filming eating guy, Andy Warhol. And he was going to be the Andy Warhol of fashion. He would create something so unremar unremarkable that it was remarkable. Something that was so out there that it was simultaneously the, the best and worst thing you'd ever seen. And he needed to completely get the color scheme of his new line perfect. It needn't clash with anything. No. No. Too many primary colors. That will dilute the entire thing. We need something a bit more strong with powerful contrast that evokes emotions and thoughts and feelings. We need something evocative. This isn't it. It's a wrong, wrong. Oh, I need to I need to find someone. Oh, Mr. Skerritt, mm -hmm. I, I, I have the new color you wanted. Um uh uh so I'm calling it Soul Who Has Just Died of Dysentery. What do you think? Mm -hmm. It's got disgust. It has a tang of remorse. There's nothing appealing. There needs to be contrast. Lenny had been working for Mr. Scarrett for three years at this point, and he was starting to get tired of his mentor's nonsense. He understood that there was a need for novelty in the fashion industry, but Scarrett would not accept any color. And, worst of all, they had a deadline coming up that they needed to meet. If they didn't create a new kind of fashion thing by that time, then Scarrett may not get to be the Andy Warhol of fashion. Time is running out, Lenny. I want this design done, and I want it to be just right. Anything less than perfection will be worthless. But I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> I, I, I do have one more idea. Uh, this, I combined my most recent color, Soul, who has just died of dysentery, and my uh, new shade of raid called red called the fiery blazes of hell and i've combined them now to this called evil soul who has just died of dysentery please tell me what you think and scarrett thought it was incredible how the colors menge together to create the perfect perfect hue but the only thing is the world didn't work with it and so he must make the world work with it it's beautiful there's contrast, there's emotion, there's power, there's emphasis, there's sorrow. But nothing else works with it, no matter where you go in the world. There will always be something that clashes. We need to turn the world into something that will work with this. All other colors must become redundant in order for this to be the one true magnum opus. One minute, one minute. Lenny, at that very moment, had the best idea he possibly could have ever had. He remembered what his favorite color was. He'd been working and searching for all these colors for all this time for Scarrett, but his favorite color was still a light gray. And he realized the only color that would work with this one he created was something simple, but also perfect. 30 seconds, 30 the seconds. The gray he loved. Mr. Scarrett. I've got it. What's we have money? to saturate the market in light gray clothing. We need to come in from the inside and fill all the brands with light gray. Lenny. So our clothes work with everything. You're a genius. We'll start a new trend. We'll get it onto social media and we'll flood the market. Everything will be gray. And then when the time is right, we'll unveil this to the world. Lenny, I'm so glad to have you as my apprentice. Thank you. And scene! Thank you folks very, very much. Hi, my name is Claire. My pronouns are she and her. I'm currently in the Comox Valley in beautiful British Columbia. Uh, I played in the Canadian Improv Games from 2014 to 2019. I would just like to give a huge congratulations to all of the teams and thank you for all of your hard work. And now, please welcome Archbishop McDonald in their theme event. Okay, so our last event for today, our style event, is called Dystopia. This is like an open scene. However, we are following our characters after the apocalypse and trying to parody young adult dystopian novels in as many ways as possible, with tropes such as a tyrannical government, a new world order, and chosen one teenagers. Could I have a suggestion for a dystopia, please? Yes, your dystopian setting 
is an underwater bunker, an underwater bunker, 15 seconds. So we're family and then we have run out of food, but we can't really swim because we no, we were never taught how to swim. We're siblings and then- We'll see this in five, four, yeah. three, two, one. Improv. <laughs> Do you hear those? Do you hear the sharks, son? Is uh, there eating I'm... today? <laughs> you see, Josh, we've been living here for about 367 days. I counted. We don't Is have food anymore. If only, if only we could go out without drowning. If only we had learned to swim. Should have taken up lessons as soon as that... The one corporate guy, I, I, I don't remember his name, but he said, we're going to make the world's biggest water park. Look how that went. Mr. Whoosh. Whoosh. Hey, Mr. Hey. Foreshadow. Oh, that's actually my uncle's name. Uh, I'm I'm just humble old Aunt Agnes. Hmm. I, I've gathered you here to talk about my, my greatest new idea. Mm-hmm. You see, water parks are cool. What? Hear me out. What if the entire world was a water park? Mm. Whoa! Slides there, waves there, everywhere. Think about it. It could not go wrong at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm and so excited. And Agnes. And, and Agnes. Agnes. And Agnes. Agnes. And that was the worst idea that I have ever agreed on. <laughs> you know, brother, you see, I thought I knew how to swim. But now when I was five years old and I saw you drowning, you know, father had to save us because I was drowning as well. You see, all these people in the back doesn't know how to swim as well. Their parents never taught them. And then, turns out, we don't have food anymore. And we resorted to just eating our own saliva. Doesn't taste very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, saliva. You see, there are no proteins nor carbohydrates in our saliva. That's why we have to go for ant agonists. But, but he's out there in the big water world. What will we do? How will we swim? We just have to do it. It's either we die of starvation or we just drown and die. You're right. Top door opening. Yeah, you see, Josh, oh. we're here. There is, oh, okay, I've been looking everywhere for you all. The surface has gone to hell. And through the last pocket of humans left, I don't know how to tell you this, but everyone's gone wrinkly. Too much water. Why did seen- it? That's what happened. And-, and I need you all left. The rest of you dry people mm-hmm. to take down Antagonist and finally save him from this corruption. We must go quickly. Okay. You. What is the oh, meaning of the Gab, there's, there's a shark. Oh, I, I can't swim away. You'll have to beat them without me. Save the world. No, for me, John. Be my sharks. And antagonist, king of water world. You see, Mister Antagonist, you killed my brother, Josh, and you have to pay for it. You have to pay for the death of my brother. He was the only one I have after my parents died. So you have to die. <laughs> oh, oh, water! Water is coming out of me. I'm actually made of water. You got him. Uh, And that was the start of the new and new world, the dry world, the dry park. And And scene! Up next, we're gonna see a style event. You already know what that is, and you are gonna see it from Strathcona! Hello, I'm Gabby from Strathcona CIG. And for our style event, we are gonna be playing a game called Kids TV Show. So the reason we call it Kids TV Shows is because the conventions uh, within the game are gonna be very similar to uh, the classic kids TV shows you've seen on TV. So some of those tropes and um, characteristics include an educational aspect. So our hosts will be teaching and learning 
learning a lesson, while our characters, who will also be in a fantastical, mythical realm, will also be learning a lesson as well. Uh, again, there's going to be parallels. So us hosts right here will be in the reality, while our inner story will just be very magical. And our hosts will be interacting with our audience. You guys will be talking to you. And we're just going to have some really great, recognizable, fantastic characters. And so for that, we asked for a lesson we can learn. Amazing. And your lesson from the CIG humans is chew your food. Chew your food. This is Skona and they are doing their style event in the style of a kid's TV show. And they got the suggestion of chew your food. And we are going to see that in five, four, three, two, one. Clap, clap, clap. Improv. Hey, kids. Welcome back to Twisted. Hey, uh, we're your hosts, Dabby and James and Sarah. Oh, Sarah was so excited for this episode. I mean, you know, yeah. food today. Where do you oh, think oh, she is, Sarah? Oh, oh, oh. Sarah, oh, you're oh, eating oh, so fast. You're just swallowing everything. You know, you gotta chew stuff, or else you might choke on accident. But it tastes so much better when you just eat it whole and let it go down your esophagus. Oh, Sarah, come on. That basically ties into today's story. You know, the rats that ate too fast. One of your favorites. Oh, I do love this story. There was the three rats, James, Lames, and Charles. And now you see James, Lames, and Charles lived in the best three-star kitchen in New York City, and they just loved eating all of the food. Wow, I'm going to eat all this food so fast, I'm not even chewing it. Ah. Well, I mean, come on, there. I'll leave some for the rest of us. We, 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 we got to eat, too. Yeah. It was the middle of the night, and if they made too much noise, the kitchen owners would come in and get all the rats gone. And if they ate too fast, they would start choking and make too much noise. But Charles didn't care. Listen, so we Charles... You know that when we eat in this kitchen, we got to be real, real quiet, all right? And that means we can't eat too fast. We can eat as much as we want. We have the whole night. Yeah, and if you eat too fast, we, you, things will go down your esophagus too quickly, and you're going to choke to death. And the <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly, you and as the sun rose a little by little, Charles decided to grab all of their foods and started eating it, but then... They heard the two-headed chef slowly coming in as Charles started choking and choking and choking. Charles, keep it down. They're here. Oh, oh no. Charles, they're going to get us. <laughs> and you're choking. You can't run. Get out of the way, Charles. Ah, no. <laughs> now, as you see, as James and Lames pushed Charles out of the way as it was part of the rat code, they were scooped up by the two-headed monster chef and dropped into a boiling pot of soup. James, Lames, my rat friend. And as Charles, and as Charles slowly started choking, the two chefs stared at him right in the eyes and decided to leave. Charles in his misery, seeing that what he had done because he had choked so loudly that his friends sacrificed themselves for him. Can you say survivor's guilt? Survivor's, survivor's guilt. guilt. One minute. So you see, Sarah, Charles actually had to live the rest of his life all by himself, all because he wasn't chewing his food. You see, he wasn't being safe and he wasn't taking the time to actually sit back and enjoy it. You guys are right. I would hate for you guys to get boiled alive. I mean, I'll eat slower now. Yeah. Tune in next time, kids, for when we bake seconds. the best pies. And, and see. see. Hi, everybody. It's me again. You've seen me periodically throughout the night, but uh, my name is Spencer Dunn. Um, I'm in Guelph, Ontario. I'm the program manager for the Canadian Improv Games, as I've mentioned uh, previously. Um, I have some scores here from tonight, um, but before we get to those scores, uh, I have a few things that I want to, uh, to talk about. Um, but before we get to me talking about things before I do the scores, um, I would like to send it over to one of the founders of the games. Um, you saw him earlier delivering the oath, Old Man Improv himself. Uh, here's a message from Howard Gerard. 
Jones. Take it away, Howard. Amazing, as always. To those of you who have participated in this year's incredible effort at improvisation, I, I commend you and congratulate you. Normally, we would be throwing confetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd throw confetti and we'd give out uh, awards. We'd give out awards. Wonderful, wonderful awards. And there is hugging and tears and embracing. And it's all wonderful. And I can't wait to have it next year. But this year, I have a, a different message for my improv nation. Especially to you, coaches, trainers, and teachers. The planet is in pain. Everywhere, people are hurting. We, improvisers, are uniquely suited for this moment in time. It is our responsibility, our great obligation, and our glory to step forward. We are uniquely suited for these times. We, improvisers, can call the Human Resources Department of every bank, every insurance company, every grocery chain. They have suffered. Pain is everywhere. We can help them talk about the pain. We can help them release the fear. We can help them work through their confusion and do it the way we've done it always. Cooperating, listening, learning, and above all, having a good time. So to my improv nation, I say this. This is the time for us who are uniquely trained. Go forth. And heal this nation. I love you, my improv nation. I love you. Thanks, Howard. Hope you're well. We'll see you soon. Um, amazing. I have some scores here, but before I read those scores, I want to uh, just say a few things. Um, the first is that we have some thank yous to give. Um, and in the CIG tradition, we give a beep beep. Um, so if you could give a beep beep at home, that'd be great. Um, uh, so I'm going to say somebody that I want to thank, and we're all going to go beep beep. Cool? Cool. Um, amazing. Uh, let's practice. Uh, 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 let's all give a big thank you to the internet. That's when you beep beep. Cool? Okay. Um, uh, first thank you I want to extend is to, uh, uh, my team of volunteers. We have had an incredible and challenging year and the volunteers have been incredible to me this year and to the organization this year. Um, they've judged, they've adjudicated, they've sent in these great videos that we've seen all night. Um, they've done a ton of amazing work for me uh, and I'm really excited to uh, to get to see all of them hopefully in the future in the next in the next couple years um, and uh, I'm really excited uh, that they were a part of the organization this year. We have over a hundred volunteers across the country which is pretty remarkable. So let's give a big beep beep to the volunteers! Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, uh, up next, I want to give a big thank you to all of the coaches and teachers who dedicated time this year. They maybe learned a new platform a lot, of, especially tonight. They all had to learn how to teach improv over Zoom um, or, or Google Meets or Microsoft Teams, whatever they were using. Um, and that's no easy feat. And they took time out of their days uh, and time out of their lives to get to foster improv in youth and that is like an amazing and noble thing to do so i want to give a huge beep beep to all the teachers and coaches that's me doing a beep beep uh uh amazing i also just want to extend a huge thank you and and some gratitude to to the students this year um we had we had tons of teams across the country uh compete this year we had hundreds of students participate in a year when it kind of felt like we weren't going to get to do anything fun here we all are enjoying something fun and i think the students are are at the heart of that so thank you to the students for working really hard um, and thank you to them for persevering and learning and growing and here we are all still connecting uh and i look forward to Hopefully next Nationals when we're all in person um, and we can all hang out uh, and appreciate each other all together. Let's just like take a minute to really th appreciate all the students that worked really hard. I guess that's a beep beep. Cool. Normally it would be a big round of applause, but I'm alone in my apartment. Um, amazing. Uh, I'm going to read some scores. They're just numbers. They, they reflect the work that we saw tonight and they were, you know, given by an incredible panel of judges, but... It's putting numbers to art, and that's really hard. And the real winner of all of uh, all of all of this is all of us that got to watch this amazing night of improv uh, on this amazing uh, platform. Uh, I think that's really important. I think, you know, I was a chunky, dorky weirdo in high school, 
And I still am all those things, uh, but improv taught me that it was okay to be all those things. Um, and uh, especially in a year when it was really challenging to like get to see students really, really thrive and shine is amazing. I'm gonna get moving before I cry uh, alone in my apartment. It wouldn't be the first time. Beep, beep. Okay, let's do some scores. <laughs> Uh, uh, amazing. I'm gonna go round by round, and at the end, uh, uh, and I'll do it in the order that the teams played, and then the last round I will do, uh, in ascending order. You'll see. Um, and we'll do a beep beep, I guess, at the end of each round? Sure. Why not? You're at home. Do your own thing. Um, amazing. Round by round. Here we go. Canterbury, in their story event, scored a 1-8-3. Bishop Mack, in their character event, scored a 1-5-6. GCVI, in their life event, scored a 1-5-2. Mayfield, in their style event, scored a 1-5-5. Scona, in their theme event, scored a 1-9-3. Round one! Beep, beep. Uh, Bishop Mack, in their story event, scored a 1-5-4. Scona, in their life event, scored a 1-9-7. Mayfield, in their theme event, scored a 1-7-6. Canterbury, in their style event, scored a 1-9-0. GCVI, in their theme event, scored a 1-6-0. Round two! Beep beep. Intermission, you all did well. Thank you. Uh, amazing. Mayfield in their story event scored a 176. GCVI in their character event scored a 153. Bishop Mack in their life event scored a 168. Skona in their story event scored a 188. Canterbury in their life event scored a 159. Round three. Beep beep. Okay, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to read in ascending order. So fifth to first. Um, I'll read the uh, event score they got, their total score, the event they did, and then the school, and then we'll like give applause, we'll edit in some cheers, you can cheer at home um, uh, for these teams. Cool. Uh, with an event score of 150, bringing their total score to 615 in their story event, give it up for GCVI! With an event score of 143, bringing their total score to 621 in their style event, give it up for Archbishop McDonald! Yay, that school is that way, but a long way, not in well, like uh, in Alberta. I don't know if I can do this for every school, I don't know my directions that well. Uh, great, with an event score of 161, Bring their total score to 668 in their life event. Give it up for Mayfield Garbanzo Extravaganza! Very good, congratulations, Mayfield. They are that way from my house. All, all, all schools in, from directions from my house. If you triangulate it, if you get a map out and triangulate it, you can find exactly where my house is after this. Uh, great, I'm gonna read the second place team um, and because you all have uh, a supercomputer in your head called your brain, you will be able to figure out who the first place team is. But we're gonna celebrate the second place team here, and then we'll get to the first place team in a second. Sound good, beep beep? Beep beep. Cool. With an event score of 197, bring their total score to 729. In their character event, give it up for Canterbury! Yay! Canterbury, that way. Same sort of direction as Mayfield, but further. Congratulations. Gosh, I can't wait till we're all back in person. I can yell, Canterbury, in person. Uh, which means that with an event score of 175, bring their total score to 753 in their style event, give it up for Strathcona! They run the stage, there's tickets falling, and there's cheering. That's going that way for me, so far. Tickets, and the team is hugging and looking so cute. Congratulations, Strathcona. Um, thank you to all the teams. Oh my gosh. We, it was amazing. The fact that these students were able to like adapt the, the scenes and the events to do on Zoom and on Google Meets, whatever platform they were using, is amazing. It's incredible. Huge love and thanks to all the teams. Um, and thank you to all of you for watching. Uh, we still have tickets available for tomorrow night's show. If you go to where you bought this ticket, uh, you can buy a ticket for tomorrow night um, and, uh, and watch more great improv. Also, this video will be available forever. So rewatch it whenever you want. Thanks everybody. Good night. Bye.